from Steve Ellison Field at Petaluma High School. It's the Casa Grande Gauchos taking on the Petaluma Trojans in the Varsity Boys Lacrosse Battle for the Paddle with also an NBL Championship on the line. The full game with Play by Play and More starts right now. Thank you very much! And a good evening, everyone. I am Griffin Epstein. Casa Grande Petaluma, it's a rivalry that strikes great emotion and passion in both fan bases, the Crosstown rivalry. Over the last four years, the teams have battled it out in the battle for the paddle, but this might be the first time between these two teams that there is a game of this magnitude. The two teams have played fantastic, both of them this season. Petaluma 6-0 in league, Casa 5-1, and and they played earlier over at Casa Grande, and the game was an absolute thriller it came down to the final minutes and the Trojans got a thrilling 18 to 17 victory a last minute goal was the winner there that game was back and forth throughout we expect another tight affair again that was the Trojans first victory over Casa since 2015 and now if the Trojans can get a victory over Casa Grande tonight they can clinch an NBL title for the first time since 2015 but it's a Casa team that's 15 and 3 and they're very motivated for revenge to try to win their third straight NBL title the battle for the paddle the NBL title it's all on on the line here, Casa Petaluma Varsity Boys Lacrosse coming up next. And we welcome you up top Ellison Field above the brand new bleachers on top of the press box. It is a perfect day for lacrosse or for anything outside in general. It is a beautiful 65 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, a light wind blowing across the field east to west. And the Trojans, the Gauchos, are just moments away from doing battle. Players are warming up on the field. JV result, Casa just finished off the season sweep of the Trojans, a 12-7 victory. The Trojans' JV team, a young team, has struggled this year, falls to 1-9 on the, the year. But the varsity is what everyone's been waiting for. We have PAC stands for it. And both of these teams have had outstanding years, as I mentioned in the intro. The Trojans 9-3, and three, but it was a slow start to the season for them. And they had a, a season last year that did not exceed expectations, was rather disappointing, especially late in the year. They really struggled, had some bad losses. But this year, the Trojans, after they started their season 1-3 and three, with some not good losses at all, blown out by both Oak Ridge and Justin Siena, the Trojans have been unstoppable. And the turnaround was about a month ago, March 17th, at Tamil Pius, day start of spring break for the Trojans. And they came back to defeat a good real Red Tails Hawks team down in Mill Valley 8-6. to six. And since then, the Trojans have it, no, excuse me, the Trojans have not lost eight straight victories since that victory over Tamil Pius have not had a lot of games that have even been close, and they've cruised through league play, except for, of course, the last time they played Casa, the first time these two teams matched up a couple weeks ago back at Casa Grande, and we mentioned it. It was a thriller back and forth throughout. Casa was up early. The Trojans battled back, only trailed by a couple at halftime. Trojans took a third quarter lead, looked like maybe they could take control, but Casa battled back took a lead in the fourth, and the Trojans marched their way back. It was a tie game at 17 when the Trojans scored what turned into the game-winning goal with one minute left, and Zach Shearer did a great job in the final minutes. Trojans went a man, man down in the last minute of that one, but Jack Shearer made some great saves for the Trojans, and they got a monumental 18-17 to victory over a Gaucho team that has not been accustomed to losing a lot this year either. They did lose a lot of seniors from a really good team last year. Six seniors on this squad. They lost 12 seniors from last year. But the Gauchos, besides that hiccup to the Trojans, have also been rolling 15-3 and three overall. They've played a lot. They've played a lot and against a lot of good teams. They're 5-1 and one overall in league with the only loss to the Trojans and including some very good victories over some good teams, including Foothill from Pleasanton, victories over Los Gatos, 
Palo Alto, Vista Del Lago, Berkeley. They've traveled all over to face some of the top teams in Northern California and gotten some good results. Both teams have been waiting for this one. This has been circled on the calendar. The winner of this one will not just be will not just take the MBL title, but will also take the battle for the paddle, something the Trojans have not had in three years. They've been swept by the Gauchos the last two years. Full game, play-by-play. Play. It's all coming up next right here on Trojan Live. All the pomp and circumstances complete. The national anthem, the starting lineups, the captains, and the stands are full for this one. The anticipation has been great. Has not been a very competitive NBL besides Casa and Petaluma. Both teams have cruised by Windsor, Rancho, and Newman, the other three teams in the North Bay League. Casa Grande in the green uniforms as they are the road team today, while the Trojans getting to play their first Battle for the Paddle game on this new artificial turf here at Ellison Field. As the starters meeting in the middle to greet each other, we expect an aggressive game Hopefully not too physical, too many fouls. There were a fair amount of those in game one when these two teams played. Casa really pumped up for this one before the game met at midfield. Josh Garcia, one of their captains, was in the middle, really egging them on. They are really into this one. This is Petaluma game, the only game they have lost in over a month. Trojans have lost also, though, not lost in more than a month. Both teams playing really good lacrosse of late. And it's going to be hard for either team to lose. One's going to have to expect back and forth throughout the game. Who can hold their emotion? Casa, Neal, and for avoid any long runs of goals. Stay calm, especially when the tension rises. It's going to be tense early in the game here and then late in the game if this one is still close. Facing off in the middle, Isaiah Blomgren for the Trojans. And... For the Gauchos, Dylan Guff, or I'm sorry, uh, Zach Labanowski. Gauchos 10-0 in MBL last year as we are underway. Gauchos and Trojans, Gauchos 10-0 in MBL last year before they lost to Petaluma earlier that, or, or late last month. They had not lost an MBL game in two years. It was a long time of dominance for them. Can the Trojans get the sweep and get the MBL title? 12 minute quarters. Four of them to decide things here today. Trojans goalies we mentioned, Jack Shear. He's done a great job for the Trojans, stepping in varsity goalie after Eric Coates graduated last year for them. First shot fired and scored a wrister by number 22, 23, Dominic Gianni. He's only a freshman, but talented lacrosse players come to both of these schools. And Gianni from about the 20 yard line fired it. And Shear could not make the save. Casa on top early. Romgen, the star for the Trojans, shine when these two teams played before. Expect to see it again. He's headed off to Mount St. Mary's next year on scholarship for lacrosse, one of the top lacrosse teams in the nation. And they wanted Blomgren. Here's a good run by the Trojans, firing just too high. We'll stay Trojan Justin ball. Turner. Justin Turner, one of the three team captains, and one of the 12 seniors for the Trojans on this very experienced team. Didn't lose a lot from last year. Trojans were dominated by Casa last year. N neither of the games they played were remotely close. First game was here at Ellison Field, lost 17 to six. And then at the return of the battle for the paddle, Trojans were similarly crushed 15 to six. But the Gauchos lost some players from a really good team last year. And the Trojans returned so much talent and experience and after that three-game losing streak, they have turned it around and been so good. Fired, and a save is made. Or did it go behind? My bad, it went behind the goal. Ian Lynch firing it, and Neil might have gone a piece of it. As that's a poor pass there, but the Gauchos are going to take over possession here. 10-14 left to go here. 
Casa Grande leading 1-0. Gauchos have been scoring a lot lately against good teams. Beautiful juke move, fired and wide. Casa player was the last player back that, so stay Gaucho ball. Ian McKissick, one of the three team captains on the Gauchos. Another good move there. That's taken away, what a great play there by, got the number in a second as the Trojans swing it around. That was not the best passing there. That's going to head out of bounds. State Trojan ball. It was Dominic Butts who came charging down the field. on a great catch on the shot. And then to take it the other way, but the Trojans did not do a good job passing. And I guess Casa was the one that got to the end line first. And they will get to take over possession. They're the one who had the majority of possession first couple minutes here. But it's going to be a feeling at Brasa, especially early. Though these teams are awfully familiar with each other. Great thing about Casa and Petalu, a lot of the players are going to play on the same team, really know each other well. And it makes for a fun and fierce rivalry between these two schools that do not like each other one bit. Fired, and the save is made. Not an easy one by Zach Shear. It was good ball movement by the Gauchos. But after Shear allowed the opening goal, much better job there. Again, room for Turner, who's had a lot of action early here. A talented senior for the Trojans. Blomgren neutralized. I haven't seen a lot of him. Lynch. Now it's over to Blomgren. Trojan swinging it around. Good patience here. Trojans can't rush anything. There is a line of defenders. Great ball move and scored. That was wonderful play by the Trojans. Ian Lynch scored it. And Turner had the assist. Nearly a no look. Slow and plodding towards the goal, attracted the Gaucho defenders, and then the quick firing to Lynch, and unable to make the save was the Gaucho goalkeeper, Jacob Neal, the senior keeper for the Gauchos. So the Trojans tied at one on the Lynch goal. Eight minutes left to go here in the first period. This beautiful Thursday evening. Gauchos win the face-off. That shot's a flex by the goal. Shear got out of the crease to poke it away. And now a scrum. Ten yards out from the goal and will stay Gaucho ball. Trojan Varsity Girls Lacrosse team also facing Casa Grande in the battle for the paddle for the girls. Gauchos or Trojans trying to win their fourth straight battle for the paddle. It's only been around for five years too. It would be impressive. Trojans Men trying to win their second here. Step over move. And good defensive play there by Skyler Horn. But picked right back up. Unrelenting here from Casa. Turning and firing. Sheer just got a piece of that one. Trojans are going to have to survive these relentless, patient attacks by the Gauchos. Allowed 17 goals gets the Gauchos, but they were able to counter enough with scoring in that one in a really back-and-forth affair. So the Gauchos start over here, try another play. And 
It is. Well, stay gaucho balls. That one trickled out. McKissick with another shot. Might be the top player on the gauchos. He's going to be involved in a lot. Drop there, dangerously. Gaucho Trojans, excuse me, could have had a break potentially. Good move, but Horn is there on the save. Might have been deflected. Still loose in front. Trojans poke it away. But the Gauchos are going to run it back down. And they'll reset in the box. Getting by, firing on a spectacular falling goal off the inside of the post that Shear couldn't get to. Jeremy Bonner, the goal for the Gauchos to get them up two to one with 525 left. <coughs> so Blomgren will face off again, but with the Trojans struggling to get a lot of possession right now. It's not been a huge factor of the Trojan star, but he wins it there. And now Turner has got it. He's been in the middle of everything. Has an assist so far tonight for the Trojans. Coming off an, a victory over Rancho Catati on Tuesday. The Trojans rolled by the Cougars and blew out Windsor on Friday night. Where they had a week off and then got a 9 6 victory over Novato and a matinee. Aggressive play there and a good steal by the Gauchos and they'll head the other way. It was Turner who couldn't hold on to it as Garcia got in his grill. And a whistle. Unnecessary roughness, I believe. And we will wait while they sort things out here, but it's going to stay Gaucho Ball. Perfect conditions for this one. Weather not a factor. Falling and scoring. Pass Shear. Another acrobatic move, and it was the junior Garcia. He is an outstanding talent for the Gauchos. Shined in these games last year only as a sophomore on the varsity team. He's been a lacrosse junkie all his life. Actually went to elementary school for two years with him. And then he made the trip over to the east side to head to the Casa lacrosse program and things have turned out well for him. He's team captain and one of the leaders. And now a goal in this big one, and the Gauchos up 3-1. They definitely feel like they have a little bit more energy, momentum, and the revenge factor coming into this one than the Trojans. But an NBL title's on the line here. Trojans need to pick it up in this vital one. Blomgren wins a faceoff, and he's going to be doing that a lot tonight. So Trojans will settle into their offense, have it. Gone a lot of opportunity, though, to do that. Gauchos controlling the majority of the possession. Four minutes left to go here in the first. 3-1 Casa Grande. Varsity boys across battle for the panel from Steve Ellison Field. Newly renovated field opened just back in March. Just its second year of existence. And a steal there by the Gauchos. Trojans get it right back. Spin move in and then resetting is Freitas. The Trojans are going to have to step back in the box in a moment here as they give it off to Lynch. Great move by one defender. and He's going to need some help from his friends. Way across the field. I don't know where he was looking there. It's a gaucho ball. It's just not a smart decision by Lynch. I don't know if that was... Nerves are what typically one of the, the cooler players on the Trojans and one of their leaders, but that was not what you want to see. Goalie fired it out and almost turned back over, but now Costa's going to send into a offense. This is a ferocious hit 
is put on there. Loose ball. And Casa returns it. More pushing and shoving. And you can see a little bit of frustration. A couple words exchanged. And now Garcia, who is in the head of things, I think is getting pulled sternly back to the sideline. Casa called timeout there as the Trojans maybe found something. Maybe that's the energy they needed. A big smashing check. Gaucho was sandwiched there. And a scrum for the ball. But that was the aggression and fight we expected throughout and could cause real trouble for both of these teams. Or cause real real excitement, at least, for both of these teams. Potential trouble if one team can out-physical the other. You can see... Kevin Locus there in the middle, given the commands for the Trojans. He is the Trojans' head coach, has been since this program started back in 2008, and it became state-sanctioned in 2015, the only coach for the Trojans. And similarly, for the Gauchos, Benjamin Hewitt has been there for a while and has had a lot of success for Casa. 3.09 left to go here on the first quarter. It's Casa Grande 3, Petaluma 1. So we are going to have a penalty here as it is going to be on Justin Turner. As you saw the, the bumping and shoving, they rule illegal stick, thank you, on Turner. So it's up to the referee's discretion how long they want to keep him in the penalty box. We will see, but that means the Trojans will be a man down here at least for a little bit. Calls can vary up to 30, 30 seconds, depending on the penalty, potentially up to three minutes, and potentially if Costa scores, Turner could be releasable and come back to the game similar to hockey on a power play. So you like the physicality from the Trojans, but obviously a little bit too much there with the illegal sticking by Turner. you got to be smarter than that. And we'll see if the Gauchos can take advantage of being a man up. They swing it around to the X. Starting and firing and wide, and it was a good effort by Shear to try to reach his stick out and potentially get thrown in possession, but couldn't do it as Garcia fired that shot wide. And that was an infraction there. I think, not exactly sure what, but... Give it Trojan ball. Shear throws it ahead a little bit too far. And those are just the turnovers you can't commit against the Casa team. That's equal or debatably more talent still, even if the Trojans have more experience. Just a sloppy play from Shear throwing it out. And it was too far. It wasn't really in the realm of anyone. We saw Lynch make a poor pass before. And the Trojans have been a lot more tense and nervous here. Turner, meanwhile, remains in the penalty box. So the Trojans will continue to play with a man down. And Gaucho's committed a rare penalty before. Very well-equipped team. Very strong in avoiding just silly mistakes like that. And Trojans could have cost them there. But good defense there. Shear is going to take it up and get a... More highly probable pass as Freitas in those gold, same golden cleats he wears for football charges up, fired wide. Will stay Trojan ball, but that was a nice save there by Neil. Freitas, or Gonzalez on the shot there for the Trojans. Freitas was the breakout star for the Trojan football team this year. Gave the Gauchos some problems in the Egg Bowl back in September, but played fantastic throughout. The Trojans' star running back led them in yardage. It was really unstoppable. No one could stop him throughout the season, and he's a true athletic talent, and that translates on the lacrosse field as well for him. Back to Butts. Under a minute left here as the sun is setting over the Petaluma Hills behind the stadium. Beautiful sight it is. This is when you envision this artificial turf field exactly what you wanted with all the rain we've had of late. This 
might have not been a game that could have even been played here if this had been last year with the no the grass field, but now with the artificial turf, all weather you can play whenever you want. Rain's not a factor. That one headed over the goals, but will stay Trojan ball. 27 seconds left. Blomgren credited for the shot. Never really had a chance. Trojans need to try to get one more chance off here before the end of the quarter. It's been a little bit more lower scoring, I think, than we expected. Gauchos with three, Trojans with one. And they've been largely dominated. Not a lot of offensive possessions here. Turner did go, come out of the box a couple minutes ago, so Trojans are back even as that is fired over the goal. And right now, the Trojans not even able to get close to the crease or really get only a any action here of really quality shots. Only four seconds left, so they fire, and it is fired wide by Ian Lynch. So we've reached the end of one quarter here. Quarter. It's the Petaluma Trojans Petaluma. one, Casa Grande three, and we'll see what adjustments Kevin Locus can make in the team huddle. Trojans need to find a solution to their offense right now. Good defense so far by the Gauchos, really giving the Trojans problems, but the Gauchos have been patient as well. Strong ball possession and not a lot of time or opportunities so far for the offensive attack for the Trojans. Second quarter, it's all coming up next. Petaluma girls doing a good job there in the towards the end of the first half there on the east side at Casa Grande, and they're leading four to three, looking to get a big victory over the Gauchos, who currently sit in first place. The Trojans lost to the Gauchos here at Ellison Field in a tight one, but they're playing good lacrosse right now on a three-game winning streak, hoping to keep it going, potentially get a home game for NCS and maybe a top two finish. So they'll switch sides of the field here. Trojans win the faceoff and a little correction on that penalty back in the first quarter. It was not due to the pushing and subbing that we saw before the timeout as the Trojans get inside to Lynch. Bumping pass and scoring. Oh, that's spectacular from Lynch. He had sticks and bodies flying at him. And Lynch just battled through the pain and all the contact there to get right in front of the Gaucho goalie and slot it away to make it 3-2. That's one way to get offense going. You're not afraid of that wall. You just plow right through it, and that's what Lynch did there. Back to the girls team there. Playing well, had their senior night on Tuesday, and feels like they've got a really good chance to have one of their better seasons in program history. It's not been a super successful program, but a really good experienced team will certainly be covering if they have potentially have an NCF's home game here. That would be really special for their 13 seniors. Trojans currently ranked fifth in NCS Division II. They're hoping to have a home game here. They did last year, and it was a disappointing loss to St. Mary's of Stockton. They blew a lead in that one to lose in the first round of NCS, but should be a lot higher seed. They'd hope to get top four, so potentially if they won that first round game, they could have a home game in the quarterfinals on the weekend, and that's coming up in about three weeks. Is this one fired and scored from long range? If you don't want to go through the wall, you can score from 10 yards down, and that's what Austin Frank did. And just like that, one minute into this one, we're tied at three. Maybe the Tronins get it in the head there of Neal as Turner gets credit for the assist as well. And two quick goals right away after really a dismal first quarter. It's been remarkable. Totally turned things around. And we talked about the ebbs and flows. Trojans were down early to the Gauchos when they played last time. Came back. Gauchos took a lead. Trojans fought back, took a lead. And it just went back and forth. And you're going to expect more of that. Both teams keep their cool. And then it's going to come down to those last few minutes. And also, who has more left? Who has the nerves to survive at? I think the Trojans woke up out of their first quarter slumber. They get it to the X. There's a miss pass. Frank having to race to get it, and it's going to be Gaucho ball. No, stay, I'm sorry, stay Trojan ball. Just win out of bounds. 
Blomgren bumped as he got it. He wants a call. He looks to the ref. Now we have a whistle. Foul on the Trojans. Blomgren sprinting to the sideline as he'll sub out, but in frustration. He was not happy with that call. If you watch any, any of the girls lacrosse games we cover, this is going to be a lot as, wow, coming way out of his goal. And there's, he's all the way out at the 30 now. They need to get it out of the box. They don't. The goal is open. If the Dronids can fire, they got an open goal. Frank trying to get around. He doesn't have room. The keeper's still not back in the goal, though. Now he is. Wow. Gauchos dodge a bullet there as Frank heads to the X. But <laughs> don't know about that decision as Blomgren fires. It bounces over. Frank's going to run it down here. Quick action here. Great surge Blomgren. by the Trojans. Neil, for whatever reason, headed away outside the box. And I think they were running out of time to get it in their own box. There's clearing. you got to get it across the line, the halfway line in 10 seconds into the box in 15. But you just wonder about a pass forward there. He really risked it, but good job by the Gaucho defense. And the Trojans were unable to get a shot off that would have been able to be quality with no goalkeeper in there. Fired over the middle, and the Gauchos intercepted, head the other way. Fan volume is really picked up here. It's a full stands, spirited. Trojans have brought out a good student section for this one. About It's about 40 to 50 students have made their way. Plenty of parents, community members, and other supporters here, both green and gold and purple and white. All nodded at three. 8.40 left to go here in the second quarter. And the Gauchos, for the first time this quarter, are really able to get into their offense, settle in, and run some plays. And you've seen how lethal they are in that. That was not the smartest not shot. Kidding. Fired by McKissick over Shear's head. Stays Gaucho ball. Mentioned Trojans fifth in NCS, currently behind Marin Academy, Akalani's, Marimont, and Piedmont. But they're pretty close by Max Prep's rankings there. And obviously Max Prep's ranking is not official, and NCS committee will decide that. Sit in a Roman San Carlos, or in uh, out in the East Bay, and make that decision at NCS headquarters on the seedings. And where the team situations go is it's right in front of the crease. Shears was batting on it, trying to poke it away. It popped up, and then a whistle, and it's going to remain gaucho ball here. Rest movements are so subtle, it's very hard to catch what the infractions are, even though I do have a reference guide of any signals. It's not like football where you're going to walk out with your mic, look to the press box, and tell everyone the call. Aggression by the Trojans. They were not letting number 16, Jeremy Bonner, who has a goal tonight, get in, get near their goalkeeper, Zach Shear. Building a wall in front of the goal. Garcia. Drones have neutralized them a little bit. Not too much action, though, for Blomgren. Say probably the two stars out there. Shear makes a save. He made that look easy, and that was not the easiest shot, but well done. And the Trojans push it forward to Butts. Ten seniors on this experienced team for the Trojans. So they played in plenty, battle for the paddles, but they were tired of losing for Casa. They turned the tables around last month, and now trying to take on the NBL title. If they win this one, there is one more game left in their NBL season, but it's against Lowly Cardinal Newman, who only has one win in NBL this year, so the Trojans should be able to close the title, undefeated title out on senior night, but they would clinch it with a victory tonight as they would go two games up on Casa Grande. Casa with two games left in its NBL schedule. Spin move by Lynch. He broke the ankles, and then Blomgren scores! Oh, yes! Lynch had the spectacular, 
and then Blomgren did the rest. What a move by Ian Lynch as he made Jeremy Bonner sit down on the ground. The Gauchos still recovering, and Blomgren is a threat to score from anywhere. He's really starting to get going. His first goal of the evening makes it 4-3, to three, and the Trojans have their first lead. Blomgren's done a great job. The face-off circle as well. Trojans have won almost all of them. Not here, though. And it's all on the momentum of the purple and white right now. Can the Gauchos turn it around as the Trojans did after it was a good first quarter by Casa? And much better defense in this quarter as well. There has been no room to move in about a 10 meter radius around Zach Shear. They have not gone any quality shots off and you, you just start to get impatient eventually and fire shots that are not reasonable to get past the quality goalkeeper that Shear is. That one nearly dropped. Back to the X, back in front again. And then trying to cross it over the middle, Horn got the tip, and Lynch is racing the other way. What a move by Ian Lynch. He gets in the, bo he gets in the box, so the Trojans have achieved getting it across in time, and now Blomgren can wait for any reinforcements from the bench. A little bit of a line change, and the Trojans can settle into their offense. Already leading 4-3, 4.25 before halftime here. Fired, oh my goodness. What a wrister from Blomgren. He yells in delight. Isaiah Blomgren, quiet in the first quarter, has taken over this one in the second quarter. Another shot that's nearly impossible to defend. If you're Casa, you're not gonna face guard him out there because he'll run right by you. But if he can score out there, I don't know what you do if you're the Gauchos. You've gotta tell Jacob Neal, you've gotta find some way to read him and take that shot or double team Blomgren and at least make someone else shoot the ball. Five to three the score here. The Trojans on a 4 nothing run. Blomgren wins the faceoff. He is showing off the senior right now. So hyped up for this game. No, he's been waiting all week long. The Trojans pretty much had, had a lot of time off of late. Not a lot of games before the Windsor game. They pretty much... They had one game in just two weeks with spring break for a lot of other teams. They got a lot of time to practice, find two things after they were halfway through the season. Pinpoint passing, and it is tipped. What great tic-tac-toe passing. Blomgren was in the right position, but it was a little high, and Neil got a piece of it to tip it over the bar. Trojans will try again here. Mishandled there by Freitas. His first year on varsity was on JV last year, called up for NCS. And then this one's loose. The Gouchers are going to get it. They need to rush to get into the box first. And then sent way too far. Another sloppy pass there. I don't even see where the Gauchos were looking on that one, but they are the one right now in turmoil. It's really struggling out there. It's all Trojans. Another crossover move. It's Turner who's weaving and dipping his way past everyone. See if the Trojans try a quick strike here. Or will they settle into patience? Everything working for them now. See if they can extend their lead a little bit longer. Spinning, turning, Lynch. 
He wanted a penalty. He was calling for it, pointing at his shirt. I think he thinks that was pulled. No whistles. They're calling it very loosely fired. And save made, I believe, on the Turner shot. See the last rays of sun as we're about to plunge into darkness here at Ellison Field. It was bathed in sunlight for the JV game in the early stretches of this one. But the second half will be played under the lights. That one fired high by Freitas. Trojans with goal by Frank, two by Blomgren. Lynch has one as well. Trojans will continue on the offensive end, doing a good job getting to those balls that are heading out. That's why you have someone playing behind the goal right now, Blomgren. Or in the X the term for behind the goal. This one fired, it's good! <laughs> Dominic Butts, the junior, with his first goal of the game, and it is six to three. As the Trojans are just putting it on right now. Lynch there, and that's why you're patient. And that time there was just a hole in the defense, but totally uncovered. Had a great lane to shoot. And right now, Neil is not coming up with the saves that the Gauchos would hope he could. And Sheger hasn't even had to be tested in the second quarter. He has not faced a shot. 150 left to go in the second. 6-3 Trojans. Blumgren can't win the face off that time. Gaucho's getting it forward quick. Maybe hoping something before the Trojan defense would set would manifest, but there, there was nothing there. They pull back out. Bonner, who's been very active, won the face-off there. Stuttering and suddenly firing a rocket. And a big one from Dominic Giami. Oh, thank you. Ian McKissick, who's been very active. The captain, one of the three captains, on the Gauchos with a goal that you badly needed if you're Casa Grande. The 5'10", 160-pound junior midfielder had been pretty neutralized for a lot of this one, but he took that into his own hands as he just had a, had a straight angle right at the goal, and he put it right in the top corner. That was a tough one for Shear to stop there. And the 5-0 run is over. For the Trojans now, and it feels like that sort of resets the momentum here. Trojans still up two, though, and would like to hold maybe possession here for the last minute and finish with a goal similar to running out the shot clock in basketball and getting the final shot. Trying to create history here with a sweep of the Gauchos and their third league title in school history. Oh, Lynch is flat and the He's tried to go through traffic, and now we get a whistle. Not sure what the ruling was there. Lynch was just martyred as he tried to make his way towards the crease. Initially no whistle, and then the Gauchos headed out on the break. The whistle was blown. But Lynch was just able to get through the Gaucho defense before, and I think the Gaucho coaches, Benjamin Hewitt and Co., try to make, telling their players that could not let that happen again, and they did not. So it will be Trojan ball there. So they retake possession. And that one was tipped. Heads behind the goal, but Jones can maintain possession. Now 33 seconds left, and that was an infraction. Yeah. 
by Blomgren, who's confused. I'm sorry, that's by Lynch. Isaac Lynch, brother of Ian Lynch, who's confused on what happened there. The twins, Isaac and Ian, both meant a lot to the lacrosse program. Both seniors were getting whistles galore suddenly here. I think we have a timeout. 25.3 seconds left. The River Cats are getting ready for a scrimmage at halftime. The future of lacrosse, they'll be on the field in due time as timeout, timeout by Casa Grande. 25.3 left to go here in the first half. Six to four, Trojans lead. So we'll see what the Gauchos can do here with one final possession before the half, possibly get it to a one goal game and that'll be another big turn of momentum in the swings that we have had in this one. Neither goalkeepers face too much action. It's been good defense primarily with some, some spectacular shots from both. And Shear is able to get it as the Gauchos venture too far in the crease. Trying to throw away ahead. Six seconds left and unable to be candled. Gauchos will not get a shot off before the horn's going to sound here. That will do it. An exciting back and forth thrilling okay, first half. It was score. all Gossa the in the first quarter, three to one. But the Trojans, Trojans really turned it around in the second quarter as they went on a 5-0 run. But the Gauchos did get a late goal that was able to get it to a two-goal game. So it is six to four as the Little River Cats are making their way onto the field. We'll be back with the second half coming up next. Six to four at the half, the Trojans lead, and we knew it was going to be close and. Very similar to the first game, I think really interesting oh. as uh, we are continuing, the River Cats continuing to play behind me. Back and forth game, I think that's that's what we expected and really similar that it was so it's so similar to that last game. Will we have deja vu again? And I think it's gonna come down to the goalkeepers who can step up and make a save. Both a bit susceptible. There's been some fantastic shots, but I think both Shear and the Casa goalkeeper have let some goals in that they wish they haven't and Shear made the key saves down the stretch at Casa Grande last month. That was the difference. These teams are so even. They both have stars on both sides. They both piled up victories. They're going to go far in NCS. And they're both both a lot players on both sides that will play at college. Casa has really built a factory uh, over on the east side. They've had players that have played at national championship winning Denver University and elsewhere D1. Obviously Blomgren going to Mount St. Mary. So there's so much talent on both sides. And it really is evened out. The one other advantage for the Trojans, and we'll see if they can use it, is their experience. They have a lot more experience. This Gaucho team a lot younger. Trojans with so many seniors playing their final game likely against Casa. Um, um, pending potentially playing in the NBL tournament. Uh, so this moment means so much. Will that be more bring more tension, or can the Trojans use that experience? Will Shear step up for them, uh, and maybe Blomgren can shine and take over? He really played well in that second quarter to help them off. We'll see what halftime adjustments both teams make. The third quarter is coming up next. Well, the future is certainly bright for Petaluma Lacrosse with the River Cats putting on a show at halftime. Ten-year-olds looking pretty good for their age, but the big boys are out for at least 24 minutes left of lacrosse. It's been a fun first 12 minutes between these two very good teams. Gauchos again 15 and three overall. Trojans nine and three on an eight-game winning streak. Gauchos haven't lost. Besides the Petaluma, uh, since uh, March 2nd. So it was against Oak Ridge, a team the Trojans also lost too early in the year. So not a lot of losing by either of these teams. Trojans win the face off to start, so they'll take possession here. Felt like momentum reset there at the end of the first half. We'll see who can snare it here early in the third. Trojan girls losing 11 to 8 right now over at Casa. That's late in the second, so they need to come back if the Trojan girls are going to take home the battle for the battle again. Got Lynch. Save made there on the Lynch shot. That was 
poked away by Jacob Neal. He's a senior goalkeeper. He's been around, so look, made a couple couple goals have been allowed tonight. You wonder if you would have liked back, but he certainly has plenty of experience, more than Shearer, who first year on the varsity squad for the Trojans. Butts gives it up to Isaac Lynch. Ian Lynch, though, has been spectacular tonight. A big part of the Trojan offense. See the aggression out there. Gaucho's not letting the Trojans inside. They go to the X. Up top to Turner, who had a bit was. The main source of really any source of Trojan offense or aggression in that first quarter, the only one that really didn't come out looking nervous. Uh, but in the second quarter, I'll quiet it down a little bit. Trojans patient here. Two minutes now gone here in this third quarter. Over the front... It was tipped, and the Gauchos are going to pick it up, and they're going to be on the run. Swatting. Where the Trojan defender is trying to slow down Rogers. But the Gauchos will get it in the box. Step one accomplished on this possession for them. And they'll reset. Firing from afar. And high was McKissick. Has a goal tonight. And that one was a little touch pass inside. Was tipped, but will stay Gaucho ball. The lovely purple end zones here. This new field and plenty of amenities as well. It's been great to see the Snack Shack open, I think, for the first time. Sort of see it. Through the poles, that building there, and the ticket booth behind it, the main entrance way, now in sort of hangout area with those nice steps over there, really nice added as the Trojans are pushing it forward here, and then the Gauchos take it back. And trying to save it and unable to was Frank, who's played well, has a goal tonight. The Gauchos had the other way. Really makes for a nice atmosphere. The remodel, not just the field being artificial turf. It looks spectacular with the purple end zones and all, but the new amenities snack shack added is in a much more opportune location. And the ticket booth as well, the bathrooms, the lighting, hangout areas. It's all great as this one is fired and scored. Top Grace goal. Tasha goals, McKissick unassisted. And McKissick. Saw Blomgren shine in that first half. He is trying to answer star for star as he has his second goal. That one from afar. And the Gauchos strike first here in this third quarter. Don't forget tomorrow night, if you're watching this before tomorrow afternoon, we'll be live at the varsity baseball team's game against the Pina Prospectors. El Molino lost recently, so as the Gauchos take possession here off the faceoff and going down hard was a Trojan. We're going to have a penalty here. Likely on the Gauchos. Two minutes, I believe. Um, unnecessary roughness is the ruling. A two-minute foul. As it was... It was Justin Lord, who I haven't seen a lot, in, a lot of tonight. One of the defenders on the Trojans who went down hard and flipped over. And that leaves, trying to get the number there on the Gaucho. That's Josh Garcia. 
who will have to spend a couple minutes in the box for his punishment there for the unnecessary roughness. Just ruthlessly flipped over Lord. So it will be Trojan ball here. Eight minutes and counting. Mentioned baseball team first place on the line against Piner. Two teams now tied for first place after El Molino had its second loss a couple days ago against Annalee. Lost one to nothing. That was helpful for the Trojans. They beat Piner tomorrow, a team they lost to earlier in the season. They'll be alone in first place. And SCL is this one is sent over the middle. And great job by the Gauchos intercepting it. The Trojans are able to win it back, though, here. And they'll get a chance to... Dipping and darting, and oh my goodness, he is plastered. That's going to be a penalty for certain. Well, Austin Frank stopped, and then he was absolutely killed by Pierce Aldwell, who came from behind and laid him out. Yes, he was near the goal. Yes, he wants some physicality there, but that was beyond the limits of any rule unless it was MMA. So the Trojans will remain a man up here. We believe that is penalty of the goal. Austin Frank. And the Trojans will get a goal out of it. So, it was a non-releasable penalty before, so Garcia mains in the box for about another minute. Trojans are a man up, and now they're two goals up as Frank gets his second goal on the evening, credited for that after he was just a couple steps outside the crease and laid out. This has been a physical one, especially in the second and third quarters. It is really amped up once the teams finish the feeling out process. Blomgren has done very well at the face-offs today. Freitas. Lynch. Good save there. Gauchos need the keeper. Neil to get some confidence. Had some struggles there, though he is. Uh, Gauchos are going to force to use a timeout there as they had some passing issues and there was no way they were going to be able to get that over the halfway line in 10 seconds. So they're forced to burn a timeout, so that's not going to give them any confidence. And the Trojans lead 7-5, 6.47 remaining in the third. Gauchos with possession, charging forward after the timeout. Each team gets two timeouts per half, so the Gauchos use one of them there. Could be costly if it's late and the players are tired and the Gauchos would potentially want to use one. Both teams, though, with plenty of depth, plenty of substitutions they can make, and plenty of strong players up and down the lineup, so neither team's going to be too horribly worried about that. That's fired, and Shear pokes it with his stick, bats it down to the ground, is able to get it. Dangerous pass forward. He missed one of those earlier, but it was a good job by Skyler Horn to be able to control it. And then with Horn struggling to get to the box in time, is you have to get there in 15 seconds. You have to cross the halfway line in, uh, I believe, 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds to get the ball past midfield, and then 15 that you need to get into the box. And so that was the reason for both teams' timeouts. So they both have one timeout remaining. We'll take another break. 6-0-1 left. Trojan 7, Gauchos 5. Can see the Petal My student section doing well tonight. They provided some encouragement and some cheers and some support for their classmates and peers. 
All in the hopes of defeating the Gauchos, taking home the paddle, and taking home a league pennant for this accomplished group of seniors. They've done a lot, but a league pennant would be something they've always wanted, and obviously beating Costa just means so much. This rivalry is so heated, they could play in chess and it would be a big deal, but lacrosse has to be one of the ones I think that just matters more there, as that was sloppy passing by the Trojans. And these games so intense. Was that the, the girls' game here, which you can check out on our YouTube channel? That one was close throughout it. Very intense one. Great play there to tip it by Lynch. And now Frank picks it up and adds to the axe where the drones can set up a play. Really great play by Isaac Lynch, who is a great Midfielder for the Trojans doesn't shine as much as Ian Lynch, who's such the goal scorer and attacker for the Trojans, but he's often falling down, and we've got another penalty here. Gaucho headed to the box once again. Trojans are going to be a man up, as it was Butts who fell to the ground and did not catch exactly what the infraction was but it's going to be number 22 for the Gauchos. Ian McKissick, one of the captains, leads them with goal scoring, who will have to spend a couple minutes. Away from the field, and the Trones will be a man up. Hoping to take advantage, already leading by two here. This game is again slowed down, really picked up in the second quarter. A lot of back and forth excitement. Both teams have made some defensive adjustments. Goalkeepers have made some strong saves. Great ball movement, and Lynch scores! Frank, right behind the goal, threw it across the middle. Those are so dangerous, but it was a great pass. And then the catch and shoot from Lynch into the top corner, and the Trojans lead by three. Blomgren, you can see, is fired up. Ladies and gentlemen, there were some keys found to a BMW around the snack shed. Eight they to five. The, table on the, far side of the, field. the Trojans lead. They lead by three, tied for their biggest of the game. Feels like they got their momentum back on their side again. Trojan ball. If I say a Blumgren, he's not a captain, but he might be the leader of this team. He's certainly probably the most talented player. Play lacrosse for a career. He's such athletically talented, though. He was the Trojans' leading wide receiver on the football team. He made some spectacular catches this year and was very impressive as Lynch is bumped coming around. He falls to the ground, somehow gets back up, fires, and the save is made. That was a wild ride by Isaac Lynch. He was racing around, looked like he was going to have a good opportunity but then was bumped here as we're going to see the dangerous run forward. He's got to make sure to get it across in time. And they turn it over. He's out of goal. It's forward. Spectacular stop from Long Ridge. Austin Frank, what a game. Apologies if you didn't catch it because this place is going nuts. Frank steals it. And we talked about the risky move that was made earlier in the game by Jacob Neal to race out of the goal. Except that time it was not Neal. He's been placed by Billy Buckarood. And Buckarood that time raced out a goal. And all the way to the 30-yarder just trying to get some offense going. Then they had to rush to make sure to get it across the half line in 10 seconds. Frank tips it picks it up, and like an open net goal in hockey, he fired it 30 yards downfield for the score, and they have a four goal lead. Frank has his second goal of the night. Has a couple assists as well. What a day for the junior. He's not the biggest or fastest player, 
You might not see him and say, oh, that's an athlete, but he is something special in the cross field. Tronin's trying to continue it as that one deflects and out of play. Trojans with a couple more goals here could really put themselves in command of this one. Gaucho's on the back foot. Battle back there, and now I believe the Trojans for the first time are going to be heading to the penalty box tonight. As Ian Lynch was the one that was battling back there, and the flag flew. Gaucho ball, and Lynch indeed headed to the box. Not sure exactly how long, but the infraction there with the stick. And the Gaucho's with a chance to get some offense going here. They have not been able to generate a whole lot, and they just have not had a lot of possession. Blomgren's done a great job with the faceoffs, winning so many of them. They had goals, and the Trojans have been patient. Scored a lot, not turned it over as much as they did in the first half when they had some sloppy passes and not allowed for opportunities for the slow, methodical attack for the Gauchos to take effect. And the Gauchos are often methodical. They're rushing it here as they fire. It's tipped and loose, falling down and fighting. Shears trying to get it. Now he gets in the face of David Grant who was trying to poke it out from under him, and we have a whistle there as the balls blow dead. But the Trojans a man down, and Lynch, it was only a minute penalty, so he is already out of the box, so... That will help for the Trojans. And the Gauchos might have to rush now, but they, they like having the ball for long periods of time as the refs are having a long conversation here. This is a hard game to ref. It's going to be Trojan ball. But they need to have long times because they like to be slow, methodical, pass it around. And when they do, they've been very effective. They did a good job in the first quarter. Led 3-1 to one with some slow, strong offensive buildup. But in this second half and even in the second quarter, they just have not had possession for long. Trojan has been cutting down on passing lane, forcing turnovers, and not allowing long plays to develop and they've had to rush things and Shears also gained some confidence in goal as well. 2.46 left to go here as they are on a long discussion and are working things out here but it's going to be Trojan Ball trying to close out this third quarter in command and be 12 minutes away from an NBL title they give it up and score that was the last thing you wanted. Something like that to change the momentum. Just some poor passing in their own territory. Garcia stole it, got it to McKissick, and Shear is hitting his uh, Fabiani with the goal, excuse me, as uh, Lin or Shear hitting his goalpost and frustration, it was his fault, the, ba the bad pass. He's made some risky ones tonight, and if he'd just been smart, he probably wouldn't have had to deal with that. It cuts the lead back down to three with 2.32 left. Blomgren, another impressive face-off when he is so skilled at that. Sun is long sat in darkness. Settled over Ellison Field, but it's not too cold tonight. It, it has really been perfect for lacrosse. Has to be only about 60 degrees out, and I don't think anyone needs blankets or heat warmers, though I do see some Casa fans who've had warmers set up the whole game as this one is fired from afar and scored a running start. And the goal by Justin Turner. His first goal of the evening. We mentioned his big first quarter. And he just got a running start at some space. And Turner able to fire from afar. And just like that, the Trojans get the goal back that they had lost. And it's 10 to 6. And the offense right now for the Trojans is working to a T. They are on fire. The passing pristine. The talent abounds and the experience does. And after a slow first quarter, they have been ready. Only one goal scored in the first. 
nine in the last. Blomgren was fouled there, so the Trojans once again will start with it, and Costa just has not been able to get it. They've tried different people against Blomgren, and last year Blomgren was also the faceoff guy, but he wasn't this dominant. I mean, he almost wins every single one out there, and that is just obviously such a big advantage to be able to know that you're going to be able to start with the ball nearly every time. Stays Trojan ball. Gaucho fans starting to get unhappy with the refs here. Lynch shuts up. Bounces it towards the goal and it skips wide. Stay Trojan ball, a minute 42 left. Don't forget, stay tuned after the game. We will have interviews and a little more analysis with the stars of the game. And the Trojans could pull this out. They are going to be ecstatic. They can hoist the NBL banner. They can hoist the Battle for the Paddle trophy for the first time in three years. It's a, a glorious paddle. It's a lot of fun. Both boys and girls get to hold it as that shot was fired wide. Trojans will continue on this patient possession here. And means so much for both teams just to beat Casa, hoist that paddle. Trojans could get a sweep. We've only done that twice before. Mentioned two NBL titles prior in 2013. Three years ago, they went undefeated in lead 10 and 0, beat Casa twice. And back in 2008, when it was a, a club sport. We have a foul coming up but the tr on the Gauchos, but the Trojans are going to play this out as the Gauchos are taking hacks at the Trojans right now. They've gotten frustrated with the refs, no doubt, but the Trojans are maintaining their cool and give them credit. Turner was the one there, and finally the Gauchos touch it, and that means that the Gauchos will now be headed to the box. The Trojan student section showcasing their displeasure at the defensive efforts of the Gauchos as this is, don't have a number for four for the Gauchos, but once again, Casa Grande will be a man down and too many times tonight for them, they've been in that position. Trojans haven't scored massive goals with it, but it's just helped with offensive possession and control of this game overall. The refs having a further conversation. Costa Grande just got increasingly frustrated with both the refs, but just how this game is going, unable to possess it, unable to score a lot. And you're starting to see the frustration spill out in the players' play. They're still totally in this, though, only down four. If they can slow down the Trojans, gain some possession, and start scoring quick, and they have plenty of offensive talent to do so, they can turn this one around, no doubt. So the Trojans a man up here. See if they can take advantage, get their biggest lead of the evening. Trying to get their 10th victory on the season. And their ninth straight victory. Trojans had a non-conference win over Tara Linda to start the year. As we have couple seconds left here in the quarter, and I'm not sure the Trojans ever realized it, but I think they were fine just holding possession at the end of three quarters. Everything has gone well for the Trojans. The last two quarters, they dominate this one as well and extend their lead two more goals ahead. 10-6, to 6, 12 more minutes of this one. Can they close it out and take home an NBL title and the paddle? Casa came out the stronger team to start. They were definitely more pumped up. But the Trojans turned it on in the second quarter, kept the momentum in the third, and they have been the team in control of this one. Some Casa fans have exited. The, it's gotten a little colder. Stands have 
thinned out a little bit on this Thursday night. Teams switch sides for likely the final time unless we're headed to overtime. And the Trojans will start with the ball by Verdict of having it at the end of the third. Great job by Kevin Locus. Team improved, able to turn things around after ref stopped early. What a pass inside. Great save made. Trojans tie your second time, and another save is made. Well, the Gauchos needed some goalkeeping to step up. Sometimes the defensive play will spark things on the offensive end, and obviously hoping that they got that there. Two great saves made by Peter Marston as the Gauchos have gone to their third goalkeeper of the night as they started with their primary keeper in Neal, but he struggled, so they're trying something different out as that one heads way back all the way to the netting behind the end zone. And maybe Marston's the answer for the Gauchos. Can help pick them up, but they need to control the ball first and just get some offense, get in some passing lanes, some turnovers. They have not been able to do that. Patient Trojans passing it around. See the long sticks of the extra defenders. There, long pull defenders are cold, called as that one is fired wide and the Gaucho is able to get to it first so Casa Ball maybe a little momentum for the Gauchos but they really need a goal it feels like to top it off and the Schroeder defense so good they're swarming Jaden Borsage the 5'9", 160 pound junior midfielder who was trying to get it up and I think Casa feeling the importance of this final possession, decided Benjamin Hewitt decided to use his final timeout, leaving him with no more timeouts left so the Gauchos could maintain possession. But great effort by the Tro Trojan defense, not even letting the Gauchos up the field with ease. 10.35 remaining in this one. Trojans 10 at Gauchos 6. If the nerves become a factor at all, obviously a lot on the line here. And who knows if this game tightens up, if the Trojans start to feel anything, all the hard work they've done really coming down to this big moment. Tuesday night will be senior night. They'll be honoring their 13 seniors as the Gauchos physically move their way up. Dipping and darting forward and scoring. Oh, that was a big one. And you can see... The Gauchos are fired up, coming out of the time and out, set up a play, and scored quickly. Josh Garcia scores the goal with Ian McKissick. The assist and the two stars teaming up there for the Gauchos and quickly tightening it. It feels like they have a little momentum. Start of the fourth here. Trones with love a long possession and a goal, really to just to suck. That momentum and surge right out of the Gauchos. And Blomgren's been so helpful winning the faceoffs. Could the Gauchos just win one or two? You know they're praying for, but Blomgren has not been letting it happen. As Bonner unable to win it. And the Trojans head on into their offensive set once again. Trojans get it to Justin Turner. Set in, fire, scored! A monumental goal by Ian Lynch, who's acts like it's nothing. Turner. High fives, Blomgren, the assist by Turner, but that one feels huge for the momentum swings. Maybe the Gauchos had something good going, could cut into the lead, but the Trojans go right back into their offensive set, and Lynch, going top shelf for his second goal of the night, and the Trojans lead by four again. 
so impressive. The Trojans have answered the call here tonight. They have really, they've taken care of business as well. And obviously, so such an exciting victory over Casa. These teams played back in March, the 18 to 17 victory, but as Blomgren wins it and is off to a sprint, trying to get one more, Frank was unable to hold on to it. And Lynch will pick it up. But the Trojans have taken care of business against the other teams in the league. Not as strong, but they really blown everyone out, and that was an issue last year. They had a couple times where they didn't take care of business. They lost to some teams they really never should have lost to. Was it, was it a team that lost its focus? But this team is matured, and they're much more equipped for a title run and all the attention they've received. Mentioned their two victories over Rancho, beat them 11 to five as that one is fired wide, and then just beat them 12 to seven. Lowly Windsor, the Trojans have the season sweep against the Jaguars as well, 17 to three. They killed them in their league opener, and then beat them last Friday, 14 to five. And first time they played Newman, as that one is fired, it's scored. The Trojans have their big, er, yes, their biggest lead of the evening. It was Dominic Butts with his first goal of the evening. And again, they just go around the horn. Patient. Butts finishes. And we thought maybe the Casa goalkeeping would step up. Maybe they'd found the right keeper. But it does not appear the case. Butts puts it away. The lead is five. And it is all Trojans right now at Ellison Field. Casa wins a faceoff. That might be their third faceoff win of about 20 tonight. It's been all Blomgren there. And the Gauchos will get a rare time to be able to set, settle into some offense. I think first time they won a face-off in the second half. And the other thing, they've played so many games, so many games, though, that they've dominated. They have not been equipped from being behind a lot, and the Trojans had those early struggles, so they were fine falling behind 3-1. They were ready for that early surge as that is fired. Good job by Shear fighting it off. And they were able to continue battling, continue fighting. And they had an absolutely offensive explosion led by Blomgren, who was absolutely spectacular in the second as Shear again diverts that one wide. And the Trojans went on a 5-0 goal scoring run, but they, they, Gauchos had dominated that first quarter. Trojans scored two goals in that first minute, and that really changed everything in that game. They came out so quickly out of the second quarter as a slip there. And then trying to fire, it was blocked. Great defense by the Trojans there. Was Blomgren and Lord in there. Not letting anything by. They want to beat Casa by as much as possible. Just a desperation shot. You can see the frustration there. Gauchos running out of patience. Running out of time though as well. <coughs> so they just fired. Blomgren... Moving his way forward with the Trojans leading by five. Seven minutes left to go and seven minutes away from a battle for the battle victory. And an SCL title. Trojans will try to make it an undefeated S or MBL, excuse me, title on Tuesday. It's senior night against Cardinal Newman. Team they beat 13 to four to start. Oh, great pass inside and the goal is scored. Apologies for the poor camera work. But the Trojans are laying it on now. Isaac Lynch has his first goal. Isaac Lynch, the pass Turner. was spectacular by Turner. Lynch was just lurking around the crease. And it was a rapid pass into Lynch who quickly fired. No chance for the Casa goalkeeper. It is 13-7. Recap the Trojans season. They started out very well. 
beat Terra Linda 16 to 5, but then traveled all the way to El Dorado Hills near Sacramento, got blown out by Oak Ridge 11 to 5, then played really poorly against a iffy Justin Siena team, who's ranked 13th in the Trojans division and will be in their league in the Vine Valley next year. They only put three goals up in a 7 to 3 loss over in Napa and then continue to struggle, falling 10-4 to to a strong Maramonte team in the East Bay. It just felt like things were really not going right for a team with so much talent and potential, but we mentioned it. The victory over Tamil Pies coming from behind. It wasn't an easy, and it was an ugly 8-6 to victory, but that changed everything, and they went into league play. Dominated since, got the first victory against Casa that I don't think they'll ever forget, but tonight they have really installed their will and just shown who's best, and a terrific display of lacrosse. Lynch continuing to cross over. Gets by the contact and scores. Oh my goodness. The Trojans are swatting away the Gauchos like annoying little gnats at their heels. Lynch gets by the contact. Gets just a moment of opening seam and fires it. For another long distance goal, the Trojans have been heading some great shots from long range tonight. And they are completely in control. They have to call it a route at this point. 14 to seven, the Trojans doubled up on the Gauchos, six minutes remaining. And the Trojans continuing to fight and battle. That's gonna be a whistle there and a penalty, I believe. Stake out your ball. But the Trojans continuing to fight, as we mentioned, they're, they're gonna wanna lay it on as much as possible and embarrass. The Gaucho share makes another save. It gets behind the goal. It is in the goal, but it is not a goal. Whistle blew, and then I believe it was kicked in. Shear had made the initial save. He makes the run out, but a little bit smarter then Casa goalkeepers who made the mistake of running all the way out, almost cost the Gauchos, and then it did when Frank made a spectacular steal and goal from 30 yards out. It definitely was the goal of the night. That absolutely lit up this place. Have to be the largest cheer of the night. And it helped extend the lead for the Trojans. <laughs> Trojans akin to be patient now, take their time on the offensive end. And possibly even got some players in there that don't get as much time. Turner gets it in. And Casa able to come up with it there. The save is made. All the starters still out there now. 444 left, probably a little bit longer you want to leave them out there with the seven goal lead, but not too much longer. Shear unable to make the save there. He's made some really nice saves, especially in the second half, but a low bouncer there. <coughs> and Casa badly needed a goal at least for their morale. Paniani. Scores on the assist by Garcia to make it 14 to eight, but just the second goal of this quarter by the Gauchos. And they have only scored four times in this half after it was a much lower scoring first half. They only scored four, but were only down two. Now they trail by six. So season wraps up next week for both of these teams as the Trojans come up with it and then turn it over. Don't want to let cost a sliver of hope here. At least play some solid defense and make them work for it. If they can wind some clock down, there's just not gonna be enough time realistically for the Gauchos. But we mentioned senior night will be a big thing for the seniors. We have another goal. Garcia has scored, spinning in a lot of traffic. I don't really know how he got it off, but but a little bit similar to hockey, I think, on where he was was held with was sort of sheer was blocked by a lot of traffic in front of the net. I'm not sure he ever shot it. And in the last 30 seconds, two goals by Casa suddenly after they'd only had one in the prior seven minutes of this half, the lead cut down to five now. 
and the starters are most definitely not going to be going anywhere for the Trojans now. Trones would love a Blomgren face-off win here to make them feel a little bit more comfortable. Gaucho's next week at Windsor before finishing their senior night against Rancho Catati next Thursday. And then the NBL tournament, top four teams in NBL. Of course, it's only a six-team league. Will face off starting with the semifinals. So if the Trones can close this one out, they'll be the one seed. And then they would face whoever is the four, which might be Rancho, might be Cardinal Newman. He was hit, was Lynch trying to get his way in. He fired a shot. It just trickled wide. But a good job by Butts to scoop it up. And the Trojans can continue working on the offensive end. Now we have an infraction, a foul called on the Trojans. Holding is the call. And it's Casa Ball here. They obviously want to push things now. Oh, they turn it over. Costly turnover for the Gauchos here. Re really need to push. And the Trojans will be akin to run as much clock as possible as the Trojans are going to deal with plenty of aggressive, plenty of sticks trying to get in their way. At this point, you have to force turnovers. If you're the Gauchos, good job by Freitas. Able to avoid things. And now losing it and then getting laid. It was Joe O'Hagan who lost it in his attempt to pick it up. He laid a devastating hit and a penalty which gets the cheers from the Casa supporters, a penalty. Jaden Borsage took the brunt of O'Hagan's hit. Well, we've seen some big ones from the Gauchos, or big ones, yes, big hits from the Gauchos, and you wonder if the Trojans felt like they needed one. <laughs> well, either way, O'Hagan takes it. Not the smartest, though. This game is not over. So the senior gets some playing time, and he's going to head to the box for a couple minutes for unnecessary roughness. So Casa's a man up, 2.48 left. They're still trailing by five. They're going to have to push it quickly. But uh, they're going to get the start at midfield as well. <laughs> but the student section is realized I'm up here, and <laughs> now they're, they're all waiting <laughs> at me as they have provided great support throughout the night for the Trojans in this exciting game and still a five goal lead. Koss is gonna have to push it. They do fire and Cher makes a key save. That one and gone. Suddenly four straight goals it would have been for Casa and things really would have felt like they're going the green and gold's way though time would have been on their side. But now the Trojans could take back over, run some clock with a man down. They got a, cl a cl cr uh, cross the line so they just fire it upwards. And they are able to control it, at least briefly. A great job by Shear just to fire it up to the 30-yard marker because they were running out of time to clear the ball. And now it will be Gaucho ball, but only two minutes left. And time at this point is not the friend of the Gauchos. They finally had a surge here tonight. In these last couple minutes. But now they're just having to fire at will. Shear makes a save. And came way too late. They were listless offensively for a long time in this game. They're pressing a push. It's giving the Trojans some trouble. Great play by Blomgren crossing over there. Letting a Gaucho defender look silly. But they played well. Blomgren was hit in the head. No call. And the Gauchos will move it forward 120 left Trojans leading 14 to 9 90 seconds away from history and the final NBL title final year of NBL's existence Shears coming up with big saves now Gaucho's just firing as quick as possible they throw it forward it's going to nearly fall a big hit as it was as the Gauchos are going to turn the ball right back over. 
<laughs> Isaac Lynch trying to get to the ball before the Gaucho keeper. And Oldwell was able to get to it and they collided, no goal. But the Trojans get the ball right back and can just about run out the clock on this very special and sweet victory. Now some pushing the other on farther down the field with Lynch. They're handshaking though and talking it out, which is good to see. And it was really good at the Egg Bowl this year. There were no incidents for a while. The PA announcer is saying, don't be mean to me. He's not running the clock. Which is certainly moving slowly with a lot of whistles now. And the players letting their feelings out. But nothing, nothing too malicious. So the Trojans are going to go to 10-3 and three on the season. They're going to go to 9-0 and in league. Casa Grande will fall to 15-4. and four. Petaluma has, will account for half of the Gauchos' losses now. The Casa hasn't lost to anyone besides Petaluma all the way since March, but they're going to fall again tonight to Petaluma. If they go to 5-2 and two in league, the Trojans will clinch. The NBL title, the first time, the final time that NBL will be played. Both teams move into the Vine Valley League next year. So this might actually be the final time in any sport that Casa, be, unless these teams play in the NBL championship game, which I guess is likely in two weeks. Uh, second, probably penultimate time that Casa and Petaluma are going to play in a sport in this current configuration before they all come into the same league next year in all sports. Lacrosse is the only sport where they're in the same league still. Now it's scored! How about a little cherry on top? Blomgren just fired it suddenly from the Isaac Lynch pass unexpectedly. I didn't even see it at first. And the ball was suddenly in the back of the net. And Blomgren celebrating his night. He's going to get a hat trick. That's three goals for him. What a night. A coronation of the Trojan season. No doubt in this one. And I would expect a party long into the night for many of them as they get the f return to a five-goal lead, 14-9, 25 seconds left. Stay right here after the game because we will have interviews with the stars, and I know it's going to be a jubilant and exciting atmosphere. Blomgren wins it, and he can run out the clock now. The Petaluma Varsity Boys Lacrosse team going to be NBL champions for the third time in school history. They're going to go undefeated. They can win on Tuesday as they just throw it up, and they're going to win the battle for the pedal for the first time in three years in the Second time in school history will win the battle for the paddle against Casa Grande. They get the revenge. That is it. The final whistle celebrates Petaluma Boys Lacrosse, our champions. The paddle returns to Petaluma. Final score, Casa 9, Petaluma 14. The students pour out of the student section with the celebration on as they get to enjoy the victory with their fellow students. What a fun evening. Stay right here. Interviews are coming up next. Right, we are here with Isaiah Blomgren after the Trojans defeat Casa Grande. You get the battle for the paddle and our MBL champions. First of all, it's meant so much to you. How are you feeling right now? Man, it just feels great, man. Honestly, being a senior playing four years, we lost them two years in a row. Uh, to come back, though, senior year playing our best, it's insane. It's amazing. I love it. I love the energy. And you guys were down early 3-1, to one, and then suddenly something changed in that second quarter, and you guys had a barrage of goals. What helped turn it around in the second quarter? Honestly, uh, it, was just, it was just all the seniors. We all came together, and it was, just, it was amazing. It was it was just, amazing. It was, we've been playing it together for 10 years, and something sparked. We just wanted it so bad. We played, we played to our best of our potential, and Ian Lynch stepped up big time. Got to give it to him. It was a great game, and honestly... It's just an amazing feeling. 
You were dominant in the face-off circle tonight, and that seemed like it was a really key aspect. You guys were able to dominate the possession. How much do you pride yourself on that, and how important did you think that was tonight in slaying the Gauchos? Um, they, they, they got a good team. I say they got a little, they're a little young on the face-off, but honestly, I'm just looking forward to next game. And I mean, it was great going up against multiple different guys on their team to be able to beat them. It's just awesome. Uh, but just got to keep working. I'm looking forward to the next game. Impressive, dominant victory against the Gauchos. Now, how, how do you keep this going? Look forward, and where do you want to see at the team at the year's end? You got playoffs coming up. We're going all the way to NCS Championship, baby. We're going to win a, we're going to win a ring. You're calling it out. All right, Isaiah Logan. Thank you so much, Isaiah. Congratulations. We are here with Austin Frank after the Drones defeat Casa Grande. How much did this victory mean to the team and the whole school and community? You know, it was big for everyone, dude. Seniors, you had maybe the most spectacular goal of the night, stealing it in Gaucho territory as the goalkeeper tried to push it up and scoring from 30 yards out. Take us through that play that really electrified the stadium. You know, it's just look at the goalie, look him down in the eyes, and put it in the cage, boys. <laughs> Hell yeah! And you had three, I think, two. Three goals, two goals tonight? Four goals tonight. You were all over the field. How were you able to step up and thrive in this big environment? You know, I wanted it for the seniors. Got to always put out for the seniors. How much does this mean for Petaluma Lacrosse program? You guys hadn't beat Casa in three years. Now you sweep them, take the battle for the paddle, and win NBL. You know, it's a big game. Everyone, dude. Seniors, all for the seniors. All for the seniors. <laughs> And finally, you you might not be the most um, physically intimidating. You're not the tallest, but where are you able to get your talent? How are you able to prove it out on the field? You know, just stay low and freaking go in with the shoulder. That's all you have to do. Thank you, Austin. Head coach of the varsity boys lacrosse team, Kevin Luchis, after you guys defeat Casa, take on the battle for the paddle in our NBL champions. What does this moment mean first for you and the team? I mean, honestly, it's like all about all the work that came to here. You know, it's all, all the time, all the all the energy. Um, you, you know, this is like a really special group of, of athletes. They've worked super hard and, and, you know, more so than like other teams I've coached. So, so, so um you know, I think I think like to, you know tonight's like all about like all that all that all that work, mm. all that time we put into it, like really really paying off, right? You know, cause right. It, it's a it's a huge sacrifice for to, to be doing all you know all the workouts, all the practices. So, so you know, having that big payoff is really huge. Game was really tight when you played Casa back in March, a one goal game. Tonight you really dominated, and controlled the game. What adjustments did you make? What changed? Well, well, well I think I think we, we were kind of a little bit more committed to possessing the ball, trying to keep our, our offensive. Uh, you know, anytime we were on offense, trying to trying to keep, you know extend that time. Um, they, they went they went with more of a, a zone defense this mm -hmm. time, which which kind of allowed us to do that. You know, we were able to really slow play things and and. Um, you know, maybe it was like a little less of exciting of a game, but but it was nice to feel like we were in control the whole time. Yeah. And this group has really meant so much for the program. Now you guys win the NBL title. You can go undefeated if you win on Tuesday. What has this group of seniors meant for this program and helping build it? And this sort of is a coronation, as you said. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and 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 really, this this senior group, um, you you know, they, like most of them basically started when the sport was added to the school. So so they're kind of like the you know the the first the first student athletes to go all the way through the program for four years. So um, you know you know in that sense, it's you know has that historical significance. But 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 also, I I think this team's just completely driven by by the seniors. You you know. Um, if, if focus isn't there, it's not it's not my job to, to bring everyone back together. You know, the, the seniors kind of kind of do that, and you know, really as a coach, like that's the best, right? When when uh, you know they're kind of taking charge of themselves. Yeah. And finally, nine straight wins. You got playoffs coming up. How far can this team go? Oh, I, I don't I don't think there's a limit for us. You know, I think I think I think we can. You know, we keep playing bet, You know, better and better every, every every game. You know, we we can we can keep going all all the way through NCS. Yeah. Thank you, coach. Yeah, of course. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, that does it for, from Steve Ellison Field. Thank you to Coach Luchas, Isaiah, and Austin for the great interviews. Don't forget, if you missed any of the game, it will stay all right here on our YouTube channel. It was a lot of fun as the Trojans take the battle for the paddle and the NBL title. Who knows how far they can go in NCS. They're absolutely on a roll right now. And we will be right there along the way as they continue this journey with this group of seniors that has done so much and still has so much potential to finish off the season.
that's going to do it for here. I'm Griffin Epstein. Thank you so much for tuning in from Ellison Field. Final score, Petaluma 15, Casa 9.